हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू गेट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स गुरु जी क्लासेस एज आई सेट द एम ऑफ दिस यूट्यूब चैनल इज टू प्रोवाइड बेस्ट क्वालिटी टीचिंग फॉर गेट एग्जाम फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट दिस चैनल इज गोइंग टू बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर चैनल्स बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग टू एंशर ऑल योर डाउट्स सो फील फ्री टू आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन यू हैव इन योर माइंड इन द कमेंट सेक्शन keep in mind no doubt it's silly so today i will start the lectures on signal and system these lectures that i am going to upload are going to be useful for all kinds of students who are preparing only for gate who are preparing only for semester examination and who are going to keep both the preparation side by side so let's start the first video that i am going to upload that is this video is going to be an introductory video here we are going to learn about the basic concepts of signal and system what is a signal what is a system um what does a signal has got to do with a system etc so let us start with a formal definition of a signal how do we define a signal at said here signal is a function or a dependent variable that depends on one or more than one independent variables what is mean by a variable we know that any physical quantity that varies is nothing but a variable then what are independent variables those variables that can be tuned or changed according to the need of the user are termed as independent variables and those variables whose value depend on the value of the independent variable are termed as the dependent variables in general the convention is that we take x for independent variable and we write y for a dependent variable so signal is nothing but it is a function or a dependent variable that depends on one or more than one independent variable let us try to understand what it means let's see let's learn about the general representation of a signal how do we represent a signal we first write the dependent variable here the dependent variable is f inside the first bracket we write the n independent variables on which the dependent variable or the signal depends here from the example we see that the dependent variable or the signal f depends on n independent variables at some x1 x2 x3 up to xn so this x1 to xn are the n independent variables on which the dependent variable or the signal f depends i hope it is clear now based on the total number of independent variables a signal depends on the signal can be classified or categorized into two categories the first one is called as a mono variable or single variable signal and the second one is called as a multi variable signal how do we define a mono variable signal or a single variable signal as the name suggests those signals which depends on a single independent variable are termed as mono variable or single variable signals let us take an example we see here we have a signal a for x here f is the dependent variable or the signal and the dependent variable f varies with respect to a single independent variable x so as the dependent variable a varies with respect to a single independent variable x so this is the example of a mono variable or a single variable signal let's look at the second example h of t here the signal or the dependent variable h varies with respect to a single independent variable t so this is the example of 
a mono variable or single variable signal now let us come to multi variable signal how do we define a multi variable signal as the name suggests those signals which depends on more than one independent variables more than one independent variables are termed as multi variable signals let us look at the example here we see a signal where the dependent variable or the signal a varies with respect to two independent variables x1 and x2 so as the dependent variable a varies with respect to two independent variables x1 and x2 hence that are multi variable signal let us look at another example we have a signal h t1 t2 t3 here we observe that the dependent variable or the signal h varies with respect to three independent variables t1 t2 and t3 as the dependent variable or the signal h varies with respect to more than one independent variables here three independent variables hence the name multi variable signal i hope it's clear up to this part now let us try to understand what does literally signal means in electronics as we all know signal is nothing but signal is simply the variation of any physical quantity with respect to any independent variable if you have a physical quantity which is varying with respect to any parameter it may be space it may be time it may be both space and time that particular physical quantity is said to depict a signal but in the domain of electronics the definition of signal is somewhat different in the domain of electronics and electrical engineering we define signal as the variation of the electrical variables with respect to time what are electrical variables those variables which are used or which are required to categorize or to define a particular electric circuit are said to be electric variables like voltage current so if we have a voltage v varying with respect to time t or a current i varying with respect to time t so these are the electrical variables so these electrical variables are said to be signals in the domain of electronics now any quantity cannot be a signal for a physical quantity when you when we will start the lectures on communication we will see this in more detail for a particular physical quantity to be referred as a signal that particular physical quantity should contain some information it should contain some variable information now a particular physical quantity if it is constant with respect to time then there is no such information that we need right so for a particular physical quantity to contain information it should necessarily vary with respect to time clear so dc values which are constant with respect to time they are not a signal because they do not contain any such valuable information so i hope that it is clear that why dc value is not a signal because it doesn't contain any such information that we might be interested into right now let us take the example of dc current and ac current to have a better understanding we know that dc current is that particular current which is constant in magnitude as well as in direction with respect to time and ac currents are those current which are varying in terms of magnitude as well as in terms of sign with respect to time so if we have a dc current we observe that the value of the dc current is constant with respect to time so as the value is constant so this physical quantity doesn't contain any such information that we might be interested into hence this is not a signal hence i um, i hope you understand why dc values are not signals now let us look at ac current you observe that the ac current varies in terms of magnitude as well as in terms of sign in this half cycle this is positive in this half cycle it is negative again it's positive negative in this way 
सो दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वांटिटी डच वेरी सो देर आर सम इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट वी माइट बी इंटरेस्टेड इन टू हेन्स ए सी कारेंट डस डिपिक्ट सिग्नल सो आई होप इट्स क्लियर अप टू दिस पार्ट नाउ लेट एस कम टू द फॉर्मल डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ सिस्टम हाउ डू यू डिफाइन अ सिस्टम द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दिस इज अ फॉर्मल डेफिनेशन दिस डेफिनेशन कैन बी यूज इन योर सेमिस्टर एग्जामिनेशन the combination of physical devices and components in a planned manner such that the combination is able to convert an input signal into a desired output signal is called the system so there are few points to emphasize on first of all any combination of physical devices and components cannot be termed as a system for a particular combination of physical devices and components to be defined as a system we have to ensure that the combination is done in a planned manner so now the question arises what does it mean to be a planned combination as said a particular combination is said to be a planned combination if that particular combination is able to convert an input signal into a desired output signal so i hope that it is clear that why the term desired is important you are giving an input signal if the system is converting it into any output signal which is not of in any of our interest then that particular combination cannot be termed as a system clear only if the combination of physical devices and components is able to convert an input signal into a desired output signal only then that combination can be termed as a system the system is schematically represented uh, within a uh, by this rectangular block keep it in mind that the system alone cannot achieve anything it cannot do anything if you just keep a system somewhere then it is not supposed to know what it's supposed to do we know that your uh, your laptop is a system right but if you don't uh, give in any input to the laptop if you don't provide it electricity for its battery to charge then it is not supposed to do anything so the system alone cannot achieve or do anything we have to trigger the system we have to fit the system by a signal which is termed as input signal here the input signal is denoted by x of t being triggered by the input signal or being fed by the input signal the system processes the input signal and it produces another signal termed as the output signal here the output signal is denoted by yt so the system is fed by the input signal the system processes the input signal and it produces another signal called as output signal this output signal is more desirable as compared to the input signal because suppose you are an engineer and if you design or manufacture a particular product and then if you marketize the product the common people who are going to use that product say a smart washing machine they are not interested about what's happening inside the machine they will only be interested whether the machine that you have designed is able to fulfill their needs that's why the output signal which is of more useful to the customers is more desirable compared to the input signals so again i am repeating the system is fed by a signal called as the input signal being fed by the input signal the system processes the input signal and produces another signal called output signal so if for a particular system and for a particular input signal the nature of output signal will be dependent both on the nature of input signal as well as on the properties of the system for a particular system if two different input signals are you know fed into it the output signals that will often are also supposed to be different again if the same input signal is fed to two different system depending on the properties of the two system the output signals are also going to be different now let us come to the last point output signal depends on the same independent variables as that of the input signal what does it mean 
Suppose we are providing the input signal x t1 comma t2 to a system. So the input signal x varies with respect to two independent variables t1 and t2. So the output signal produced by the system which is denoted by y will surely be different from that of the input signal but it will depend on the same independent variables as that of the input signal. So I hope it's clear up to this part. Uh, so I will finish this lecture one, at this point. If you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you. Feel free to ask any doubt. Uh, in the next lecture I will start exactly starting from where I have finished in this lecture. Thank you.